Um, okay, so uh, big questions podcast. We've already done this once before, and this time we're going to focus on a specific question, right? And I think it's appropriate that we ask it because you've actually written a book on this topic. How do you get out of your own way? So that's the question of this episode, uh, the topic of our conversation. Um, so let's start right with the question. I mean, how do you get out of your own way, Cressa? It's, a, it's been my life learning. And I wrote this book about uh, five years ago, and I'm still <laughs> learning to get out of my own way. I think one of the big ways that I do it is meditating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've talked about that a lot. I mean, that's a really important thing for me. It gets me, it gets me to the place where I can see what this exist, existence is actually about. Right. You know, so it's yeah, I'm not just this personality, this human at the name Cressa who's running around doing whatever she's doing. Um, that I'm this consciousness, and that is connected to all that is. Mm-hmm. And that's the grander thing. And when I'm in that space, that's to me when I'm out of my way. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that when it's really interesting when you can get to that place. And I'm very fortunate that when I get to my meditations, I'm I can get to some pretty deep Mm -hmm. party in head, you (laughs) know. And but that's when I I have such a clear vision of who the personality and the ego mind is. Mm And every time I, 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 I move away from that personality and the ego, I can see how small it is, hmm. how limited it is. And, and the other word that comes to me is tight. Hmm. Restrictive. It's right? restrictive. Yeah. It's like running around doing its little things. Like, oh, we've got to worry about that. Now, now, now we've got to worry about this. Oh, now we've got to worry about that. Oh, what are we going to do about that? And it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So right off the bat, you know, we talked about this before. We wanted to kind of get into the background, right? Or like the context. Like when you say getting out of your own way, what are we really talking right. about here, right? It's not a physical getting out of the way. It's something no. different. So like how do you how do you uh, elaborate on that? Or how do you explain that to, to someone who maybe hasn't meditated or doesn't have a lot of experience in this realm? So for me, it's, it's quieting the mind so that it's not talking. Because the mind will talk all the time. Mm-hmm. We have both read a wonderful book called um, uh, Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And he talks about the renter in the head and that we have all these voices. And, and that's the personality. And it's programmed, you know, by past experiences, by um, ancestral history, by parental advice or no advice. You right. know, it's, it's, it's programmed by all that and all the things that have happened to us. And it, it, it's like, well, it's a computer program. Yeah. It, just, it just talks all the time. I mean, you know how random it is. Mm-hmm. I had a weird dream the other night about having a salad out of somebody's hair. Like, how <laughs> random is that? <laughs> it's yep. like weird stuff that pops up in the head. Yeah. So that's the mind and the personality. And then the spirit spark part of ourself, to me, is when you're in that nothingness it's a it's an empty place but it's connected to spirit creator source god whatever you want to call that and i don't see it as a lot of people think of this as some kind of entity but it's not for me it's an experience Mm. so creator source and i like to use the word creator because that to me is what it does it creates right and to me when i'm in that place it's just limitless. When I can hang out there, there's no, no limitations at all. Nothing. Right. And it's like, why are we any other place? <laughs> yeah. Why are we in our egoic mind all the time and our personality that's so limited? Yeah. Now, of course, the mind has a very important role. It mm-hmm. thinks and it helps solve problems. And there is some really good value to it. For sure. That is who we, part of who we are. But when you're in that grander spirit space, that openness, expansion, um, it's just everything. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially what you're trying to do is get the mind out of the way. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right? Or that's, that could be another way to frame uh, the discussion topic, right? Because we're talking about how to get out of your own way. Well, it's almost like how to get the ego out of your way. How to get the ego out of our way. And 
and that constant talking that it does. Mm. And that's why I think, it, so here's the key thing that I've learned is you have to train it. Yeah. And that's why I meditate. I meditate every day, almost every day. I might miss one day a week, but that's not often. Yeah. And um, and I, I have really trained it to, okay, now you have to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. And it sometimes takes a while. I use yeah. music. I use some deep breathing. Sometimes it takes a while to quiet it. But then when it's quiet, it's fascinating because then you can... You're just in this open space. Like for me, it's 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 euphoric. Yeah. And the words that always come to me is there's such peace and love and joyousness and and expansion and that anything is possible. Mm. So how does the mind get into a position where it's obstructing us? Like you know, you said the mind has some very valuable aspects to it, which I completely agree. I mean, it's undeniable. Yeah. Um, but how does it become such a problem for us when it really has all of these sort of like innate uh, benefits? Because it flies into fear is what it's known, and 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 I think a lot of that is so subconscious that we're not even aware that that's happening. Mm -hmm. But you know what it's like. You're triggered. All of a oh, sudden, yeah. you've been very, you know, everything's fine. Someone says something, or somebody calls you, or or, or it's somebody you have some challenges with, and you immediately go, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're not in the center anymore. Yeah. The mind has taken over. Right. The center. Yeah, we've got to go back to that. But yes, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So for me, I'm, the more I've learned to say, I see that, I hear you, but not buy into it. Right. Yeah. So hmm. Now jump on that train. Oh, that train is like, okay, let's, we're going to start worrying about everything. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be in fear. Yeah. I don't want to go on that train anymore. Right. I'm tired of that train. Yeah. And it still comes, but I have much more spaciousness spaciousness within my own experience that I can say okay now I'm watching that right yeah you have awareness of it yeah yeah I've, I've mentioned this to Candace before like even when I'm having a temper tantrum and I'm having you know one of those types of moments there's a part of me that is detached from it the whole time and it has no power to stop it you know it's gonna I'm gonna have this tantrum it's over yeah, yeah. I'm already having yeah. it right but that part of me is always there and there's always this almost like feeling of like, ah, you moron, like, you know, like they're there. It's almost yes. like that's what that presence yes. is doing. And so having the, you know, at least that little bit of yourself that is detached from it allows you to, I think, diffuse it in a lot of ways. Right. It, it doesn't, your tantrum is going to last five minutes instead of two weeks, right? Right. And, right. Uh, and then it also allows you to reflect on it. Um, and try to learn about whatever, you know, because now you're calm and you're like, okay, well, what triggered me? Right. Yeah, you, know, you can investigate. So because there's a part of you that never got caught up in it, it's it's still there going, okay, now let's look into this, you know? So, but again, it's strange how we're describing it in almost like um, adversarial, right? Like you versus the mind, right? And I think it's important to note that these are just like ways of looking at it or models that we can use to like Absolutely. make sense of it and, and better manage our experience, right? And and I think this is the key that I have learned is not to get mad at the ego. Mm, yeah. And and I've been there and we have all been there. Go, there you go again. Jeez, I wish you'd shut the, up, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> yep. But now I don't do that anymore because it just creates more power and food for the ego. So it's like, okay, it's all right. One of the lines that I got in one of my meditations, which I've shared with you a while ago, was there's bathe the human in love. Mm, yeah. And now yeah, I'm having a very stressful couple of weeks with moving and moving a client and lots of staging jobs and stuff. And I've watched my personality, you know, going, like, oh my God, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, it's okay. Yeah. It's all right. You'll get through this. It'll all be all right and everything will be good and just yeah. calm it down and bathe it with love. And that, to me, the every time you do that, you're training it that it's not in charge. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and again, referring to it as if it's like a pet almost or an animal that, well, oh, you know, and I've used that analogy before. Yeah, me it's too, like, like you got to train puppy. your dog. Like, you can't let it bite people all the time and, yeah. you know, yeah, I love not that. pick up the crap, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, it's very interesting that you have this kind of like relationship to yourself. Yeah. And, and so depending on the nature of that relationship, 
or your let's say your relationship to your mind, your relationship to your soul, your spirit, you know, your heart, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> yeah, based on your relationship, it either helps you, the mind, for example, yes. or it gets in your way. And That's then you're right. having to read a book or learn or meditate because that seems to be the ways to shift it, right? Yeah, and, and I think awareness is the key factor, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're not aware of, you know, something that's going to muck, you don't know it's going to muck. Yeah. But when you're aware, oh, it's going to muck again, then you can step in and say, hey, it's okay, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's like it's like soothing a little puppy, you know? <laughs> just calming, yeah. calming it down. And But meditation, and there's lots of other ways of doing this. It's not just meditation. I mean, people do yoga. Mm -hmm. There's And I, in the book here, there's lots of transformers I created about, there's 40 of them, I think, in here. Yeah, 40 yeah. of them. Um, different transformers that you can use that will also help to calm down. There's acupressure points that you can use and yeah. brain gym and lots of different techniques that you can use. Again, what it's doing is saying, okay, let's just re... It's recalibrating the energy. Yeah. Yeah, another way of looking at it, right? Yeah, reprogramming the mind or, yeah. you know, or whatever, the operating system or whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah, and just, and again, the more you feed it with its fear and fear eating into that, the more it just grows. Yeah. You know? And the more you can say, it's okay, you know, chillax. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? But that's, again, that part of us evolved or is around to keep us alive. Yes. And I think that, 200,000 years ago when we were out in the bush, you know, the mind, there's a reason that we have negativity bias. It's because you better detect the threat. Yes. Because that will kill you. So you yes. better pay more attention to danger than to opportunities or, right. you know, benefits. And that, I think, has carried on into modern age. But now, you know, we're not hunting bears. You know? Right. So, like, co-workers trigger us the same way I, like, you know, death, life or death situation would in the wild. And it's an, it, it's an interior kind of, it's, it's almost like it's, it's this interior landscape. Mm -hmm. And so I think we all need to know what is our interior yes. landscape. Yeah. Is it a healthy, and this is the key for me, if it's a healthy landscape, then your cells and tissues are going to be happy. Right. And there's less likelihood of you getting whatever's out there. Right. Right. If you're always stressed and you're pumping a cortisol when the brain is all, totally in control and you're stressed and in fear, then you're open more to catching all these things that are going around. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, they've shown pretty conclusively that stress affects the immune system, right? So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you, I used to do uh, heart math research institute. I used to study them a lot and I used to use them in the workshops that I did I'm living with ease and... If you get mad at somebody in the car and stuff, that it stays in your body, that cortisol and that whole pump of, of, of stress Adrenaline energy. And... Yeah, it stays for six hours. Wow. When you've just told somebody and given them the finger or whatever, <laughs> that, they don't know anything. They no. don't even know you. And you've gotten all stressed, and now you're causing all that internal damage. <laughs> Who is it that described anger as like, Taking poison because to, you know, hoping to hurt someone Somebody else, else, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, like it's yeah, like this doesn't work. Thing. They don't even know you exist. But because most of us aren't aware of that, yeah, you know. But once you do become aware of that, you have a responsibility to to your own body and soul to just treat it well. Yeah, and that's why I think you know external kindness and compassion and and helping people and stuff that produces all good mm. oh yeah good chemicals yeah it feels good to do good yeah yeah absolutely so it's selfish in a way but <laughs> it is yeah but it's it's yeah it's so important i think yeah well i mean it's the most important type of selfishness i, I think that it is out there right because if it didn't feel good people wouldn't do maybe as much good or you know i imagine it would be a different uh, story like sometimes if i'm having a you know just an off day or something and i'm going to starbucks I just say to them, pay for the guy behind me. Oh, yeah. That's really And nice. I've done that quite a few times. And it's yeah. like, ooh, that feels good. And they yeah. don't even know. I don't look in the mirror. I yeah. don't see who it is. Because yeah. yeah. it's a drive through right? So I'm driving right through. Yeah. But I just, I feel good. Yeah, that's a nice thing to do for sure. Yeah, you give however you can or you do good however you can. Yeah, but absolutely. It costs you, you know, costs you nothing unless you do what you do. But <laughs> um, yeah, so 
I wanted to ask you if I let's say again I, I I don't know anything about this. I want to know: Am I in my own way? Like I don't even really know what you're talking about. What would it look like if I were getting in my own way? What would be the symptoms of that? What would my okay. life be like, for example? You'd be in a lot of fear. Mm-hmm. You would be stressed a lot. Mm-hmm. You would be um, reacting to situations. So somebody says something instead of just being with it, quiet and mm-hmm. thinking about it, you react. Right. And we see that all Reactivity, the time. Yeah. yeah, you react externally, you may tell a person to take, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. and, and, and usually those folks that aren't aware of this at all are pretty unhappy. Yeah. Because their, their personality, their programming is in control. Mm-hmm. And they think that's that's it. That's all life is. But that's not. Right. When well, you, if they've never experienced anything else. No, right? right. That's all they know. Yeah. But when you get that, figure that out, that, ooh, wait a minute, it's totally different. You really do have control. Yeah. Um, I mean, you don't have control over what happens, but you have control about how you handle it. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's probably the biggest insight that I've ever had in my life and the most the most transformative one in terms of my like mindset personality and the way I react to things <laughs> you actually do have some like you know it's not just this like cause and effect thing where, that is completely set in stone yeah. where this has to happen you know like somebody insults you you have to respond this way it's like no you always have a choice it yeah. might be a hard choice to make and it might you might not make the right one every time but at least being aware that you have the choice I think is the beginning of, of you know positive change in some regard and and one of the things i've noticed in having kind of a social worker background is that when somebody's in a really upset place and stuff when you can use some kindness yeah. and just totally say ah oh, i get where you're coming it must be really hard yeah. like it just diffuses the whole situation oh, right away yeah um so yeah and and so that works internally mm-hmm. when you're kind to yourself yeah. And when you get, oh, there you went again. It's okay. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Take it easy. It's the same thing. It diffuses it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. And so in, in, in a very real way, you have a relationship to yourself. Yes. You know, because like if this happens in interactions between people and showing yourself that same kindness has the same effect on oh. you, it's like you're, you literally have a relationship with yourself. Yes. <laughs> Which is kind of a... <laughs> It's like, wait, what are we talking about here? But I'm just me, right? Yes, yeah. But it is. It's that inner... If your inner world is not happy and you're stressed out and you're letting it control, then it's having an effect on everything. And I know that as as an absolute fact. I mean, that's why I got sick in the early 90s Mm -hmm. is because it was a total stressed out mess. Mm -hmm. And everything was controlling me and I, I had no idea of this inner world that I... And then once I started to breathe and and stop and started to l- look at what was going on inside me, no wonder I was sick. Mm. Yeah. Um, that I had, I took responsibility and not that I, no blame whatsoever, just responsibility saying, okay, so I've helped create this. Yeah. By not looking after this inner workings of my body and being kind and stuff to myself and always having to be out there doing and fixing things, fixing yes, people. Yes, or, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's my issue, fixing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, yeah, we all have tendencies, right? And when yeah. you're when when the need to fix becomes just the desire to help, yes, then it's healthy. So yes. it's like this. It's like a spectrum, and it, I feel like. There really are no flaws or, or qualities. It's They're all kind of spectrums. And like when you get to one end, it's like greed. And when you get to the other end, it's like complete selflessness. And like, yes. you know, you want to find a good happy medium for yourself in, in all of those types of like categories, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, anyway, so we talked a lot about choosing. And one of the things that I've been thinking about recently is... Um, how everybody has thoughts, but not everybody chooses thoughts. I don't know when that came up oh. very recently, but I was thinking about that in in respects to this. Getting out of your own way, when you meditate and stuff, um, one of the benefits, I think, is that you can start to, like, become aware of certain things that you have to deal with and then start to, like, unwind them, like, or, you know, like a Rubik's Cube, right? And so how how do you sort of get through that process like the meditation is obviously a crucial part but when you discover something about yourself that you know you don't like or that you need to fix right how do you go about 
breaking a pattern that's been set over 30, 40, 50 years of your life, you know, behavioral sort of conditioned response. Right. How do you start to smash that? Or does it just kind of change as you meditate? That's a really good question. And I think the key thing is you can't change anything until you look at it. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I think the looking at it, the being with it and recognizing it and giving it a voice, sometimes that's all it needs and for it to go away. Wow. And dissipate. Um, And that certainly has been like I used to in my past get all upset about stuff at work and when I was a social worker and, you know, annoyed with my kids or whatever and just stuff coming out all the time. And I very rarely express, well, you've known me for quite a while and I hardly ever get upset. And, And if I am upset, it's more my inner world. It's more what's going on inside. Right. So, um, I think... It's just about really being with yourself and watching that and giving it a voice Mm -hmm. and then saying it's okay. And then I think that, I think in a lot of ways, I'm not the same, definitely not the same person I was like 25 years ago. Yeah. Very different because I just don't, I don't react because I've looked at all that stuff. And there's been some dark parts of myself that I've had to look at that haven't been very nice. Yeah. And, but I've looked at them, I've loved them, I've honored them, and I've said adios. Yeah. Yeah, honoring it, that's kind of an interesting thing as well. You know, even things that we view as negative happening to us, it's almost like, well, this is woven into your life now. And so you can either turn it into an obstacle, something that gets in your way. Yeah. You know, or you can, like you said, honor it, learn from it as much as you can. And then just give it up to the creator, you know? Because at one point, at some point in my life, those aspects, like let's say anger, yeah. they served a purpose. Yeah. And sometimes they served a purpose of self-preservation. Yeah. And so I, they had a value. Mm-hmm. Now I don't create that kind of stuff. And I'm not a child anymore. I'm not having somebody do something towards me. I'm an independent adult. And so it's totally different. But I think at, at some points in my life, those those experiences were valid and oh, yeah. and maybe I reacted in an angry way to protect myself or to protect somebody else yeah um, but then when you just learn what's going on and so you just when you're more peaceful and stuff inside I don't create that kind of stuff mm-hmm. anymore yeah like yeah. you know it's it's like who you are inside is kind of what you end up creating on the outside yeah do you feel that well I think there's a correlation let's say I, I can't decide whether it's, you know, the inner creates the outer or the outer creates the inner. I kind of feel like they both go hand in hand. You know, I think okay. it's kind of like a nice dance. Because yeah. there are external conditions, as you said. For sure. And I've talked about this with you before. It's like some of this stuff to me, you know, sometimes when I think of like, you know, a kid who's born in Africa who's going to live two, three years because he doesn't have food or whatever. Like, you know, telling them like... It's all what you create yes. with your, you know, it's true, to, it's true to a certain extent. I think collectively as a species, absolutely. As a human, as a human civilization across the globe, we are seeing exactly what is inside of us collectively. Yes. And the results, you know, speak for themselves. So I think that a hundred percent, but on an individual basis, yeah. there are certain circumstances where it's like actually the outer created the inner, as you said, um, the anger was a result of, again, extenuating circumstances. Right. And so it wasn't that you manifested those circumstances, but they put something in you that then began to affect your external world for right. probably decades to come, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah, for sure. And then when you start looking at that and saying, I don't need that anymore. Mm-hmm. Because once we've reacted a certain way, and if we don't look at it, we just think that's who we are. But it's not mm-hmm. who we are. Yeah. It's who we were conditioned to be. Mm-hmm. And so that's the thing. Sometimes, you know, you're brought up and and you spend the rest of your life trying to undo all that stuff, you know. But it's all that conditioning because we've been conditioned by parents, by our society, by all those around us, um, by what our expectations of us. And then when you start looking at that and you go, hmm, is that my truth? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Well, the Tao Te Ching, he says, uh, the sage unlearns something new every day. You know, like yes, the intelligent right. people learn something new every day. Wise people unlearn something every yes. day, right? Or something like that. And it's like, I like that. Yeah. And they, and that's, you know, again, they were 
trying to go back to you know the primordial virtue right like the original virtue they were trying to be like one with nature not manufactured culture you know right. all this kind of stuff so um but yeah i think they're the ego the person we think we are can get in the way of who we who we actually are and, and who right. you're meant to be in a lot of ways right right absolutely i mean and that's why practice and and talking like with like-minded folks and stuff and just really creating that power within ourselves and just yeah it's just so important because then it's just i find for me personally the ego just loses control it's mm -hmm. just not it's not out there running around all the time <laughs> yeah. create havoc for me it's because i've said sorry <laughs> yeah no thanks yeah, yeah just back off just relax chillax yeah um <laughs> i once described it i think to candace as like a horse you know like when your horse gets angry, you don't have to go for the ride. Like right. you can get angry, but and that, I think that was my way of trying to describe that feeling of having part of you not be involved in the anger, like being detached. So I was like, you know, get off and say, go on, horse. You go on a ride. You be angry, you fucker. Go on. And you watch the horse and you don't get involved with it. You just, you're angry. You let the anger run its yes. course. Yes. And then you're like, are you done now? <laughs> And you give it some pats, you know, like, again, being kind to yourself about yes. it because, yeah, yeah, sometimes these things just spring out of us and it's like, well, all right, it's done. So I have to find the best way to deal with it now. Yeah. And for you, I want to ask you a question. Like, how do you feel that these values and these ideas and stuff has affected you as a parent? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, again, night and day, right? Because when... Again, before I had these experiences, before I started thinking about this stuff, I had Kiana for, I think she was four, probably. And so Candace and I sometimes are like, I feel bad for her because she didn't, you know, I, again, not to be like full of myself, but I would much rather have me as a parent now than, you know, when she was born up till four years uh, old. So, yeah, I think just being able to not react in anger, yes. to not get triggered by them, which yeah. is so hard. <laughs> Because they're always <laughs> triggering you, trying or doing something. You're like, don't do that. No, don't do that. No, stop, please. Uh, but then it's like, no, okay, just, you know, you can you can still do that in a way that's not aggravating to yourself. Yes. Like, you know, laugh about it, which I laugh a lot. I make a lot of jokes about it because when it's funny, it's not going to trigger you. It's yes. just like, and sometimes it really is funny because they just take it to oh. that level where you're like, I can't, I just can't even be mad right now. It's like, holy, but... Yeah, the, uh, the ability to diffuse the anger either right before it happens or like shortly after it happens and just to come right down really quickly uh, is the most one of the most valuable gifts I've ever received, you know, like wow. as a parent, as a partner, as any, as a human being, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really beneficial and, and it's interesting to me because like everybody kind of arrives at this point differently and for me... I've found that the process of getting out of my own way has been, as you said earlier, training the mind and the ego yeah. and making it work for me. Yes. And it doesn't, it. and it, yes. sometimes it mutinies, like it rebels and sometimes it's got you and you're like, oh, damn it. Yes. You know, it's snuck up on me. So it's a slippery slope <laughs> because it's always crafty and it learns. But I, again, like I, I don't, instead of quieting the, the mind, I make it talk to me about this kind of stuff yes i'm constantly thinking about being present not just thinking about it just thinking about it makes me become present now so yeah. it's like you know i'm i'm trying to train it to become like a a reminder of the good things and the things that help me and that's one of the things i do in my when i'm in that real zone space i just think of all the all the the <sighs> the energies that are created when I'm in that um, creator space and I just it's things like peace and joy and just mm -hmm. and I just focus on that I am peace I am joy and the more I say that and the more I talk about that the more I am that yeah yeah well that the mantra is right repeating that yeah that you're programming your subconscious in a lot of ways right yeah, absolutely like you're repeating these things until they are true, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Because the brain oscillates at a certain frequency. And so when I used to be a stressed out person, it was oscillating at a certain frequency. And that's all I knew. Yeah. And so I would create more drama in my life because that's who I thought I was. Yeah. And then when I finally started stepping back and saying, hey, no, you know what? I don't want to live like that. I want my life to be easy. Yeah. 
And it was like, are you kidding me? You know, but it took a while. It took a few years to really have that take a hold and mm -hmm. say that, you know what? Life can be easy. Yep. It doesn't have to be hard. It, it, I mean, it's, it, it sometimes challenges present themselves, you know, and you have nothing. You can't do much about that. But again, it's how you handle that. Yep. You can go off the deep end and complain about it and make a big deal about it. Or you can say, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, when you are comfortable saying it is what it is, what I find is that it becomes what you make it. Yes. Because it's like, well, okay, I accept this. But you can look at it now from many different perspectives because you're not denying it. You're not looking away. You're not right. mad about it. You're just like, okay, this is what it looks like right now. So let's investigate instead of getting triggered. And, and the other thing I think is helpful is just asking ourselves questions. Mm -hmm. Like when, when the mind, like this is a classic example I used to use in the teaching that I did was, so the engine light in my car went on, this is like 15 years ago. And right away my mind's going, oh my God, my engine's dying. Uh, it's going to cost me, the car's dead. I'm, it's going to cost me a lot of money. Oh my God, what am I going to do? And then it was like, wait a minute, let's ask questions. Is that any of that true? <laughs> Yeah, probably not. Yeah. And then, okay, so how can we find out? So anyway, as it turned out, it was really weird. The engine light would go on in this Mazda when the gas tank was loose. Oh, interesting. Weird, eh? Yeah. So once I found that out, it was like, but I caught myself before I went down that train. <laughs> yes, yes. You started like telling yourself a story right away about the engine Immediately. light. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's just going to cost a lot of money. And then immediately you can feel the fear coming up. What yeah. am I going to do? How am I going to pay for that? And and then it's like, no, wait a minute. Is any of that true? Do you know if that is true? Right. No, I don't know. I don't know any of that. <laughs> so let's find somebody who does know. Yeah. Let's go see a mechanic. Yeah, totally. And it, that's exactly, he said, Mazdas have a weird quirk that if you don't tighten up the gas cap properly, the engine light will go on. That's funny. Hmm. So... Every time, so then I always did that. Never that tightened it tight, and the engine light never went on. Right. So asking ourselves questions before the ego starts to go on its rampage is just asking: Is any of that true? Yeah. Yeah. Questioning yourself is yeah a huge thing because again, you have to be able to separate from yourself enough to ask those questions. Yeah. To be honest with yourself, which can be hard, right? Because most of us create our own stress. All suffering comes from wanting things to be different than what they are, which is one of my favorite lines, eh? Yeah, well, and I think it's definitely a partial truth. Yeah, I mean, resistance to what is, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I've been talking a lot about surrender uh, lately, and it's, again, in, in relation to the title of your book, it would be like when the ego surrenders to the, I don't know, higher self, let's call it, then you're out of your own way. You're yes. in alignment, right? Yes. The ego becomes like the thing it was meant to be, the helper, the servant, the thing that gets you uh, to your job on time yes. in the morning, uh, that sort of thing, right? Computation, you know, whatever, what, it, what it's meant to do, but it serves a higher purpose, which is the whole human organism. Yeah. And I love that, that it becomes a servant to who you really are and to what yeah. you really want to create. Yeah, an extension of you, something that's, again, not something that you're at war with or that's yes. sabotaging you or making your experience of life worse than it needs to be. Yeah. Because it's really about improving, you know, there's just a way to improve it. You know, it's not going to make your problems go away, but the way you feel about your problems is going to change drastically. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's an amazing <laughs> journey, isn't it, Ollie? Yes, it is. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I think that was good. What do you think? I think I think we've covered it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just barely scratching the surface. Yes, but, but uh, I think we got out what we were talking about and what yeah. we'd like to share. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, do you have this on Amazon or anywhere? Or? It's on my website, okay, um, christinasisu.com or pictureperfectstaging.org. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's on there. Cool. It's available. Put the link in the comments. And, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, That'd be great. Always a pleasure. Yeah. And let always. me know other questions that we can talk about in the future because I that. like doing this. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Me too. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah. Have a good night. <laughs>